which are the most dominating creatures in the old school format, and if we were to rank them, which one would win, and if the winner is the one you expected, are you also a winner? Let's have a look at the top old school creatures. After analyzing the top 8 deck lists from all the tournaments in the past year at tcdex.net, I compiled a list with the 13 most appearing creatures. I call this list the usual suspects. Here they are Mistress Factory, Savannah Lions, Kurt Ape, Atog, Black Knight, Argothian Pixies, Serendip Ifrit, Hypnotic Spectre, Setch Troll, Suchi, Ernam Jin, Juzam Jin, and Sarah Angel. These are the 13 most dominating usual suspects. But why do players always choose creatures from this list? And why do they choose to use creatures at all? Creatures have a great relevance in old school magic. Let's crunch some numbers. The old school expansions are Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, Arabian Nights, Antiquities, Legends, and the Dark. The total number of all of these expansions combined is 883. From those, 379 are creatures. This is almost 43% of all available old school cards. The next largest types, enchantments and artifacts in that order, conform 36% combined, so not even close. This just shows how relevant creatures were intended to be by design. It is true that not all decks need them to provide a kill, but the big majority uses creatures to get there. Well, they don't use just any creature, they choose wisely from the list of the, the usual suspects. suspects. Perhaps if we try to analyze the power level of these 13 creatures using some criteria, we can later on use the same method to recognize why they were so strong compared to the others. In order to identify the usual suspect with the highest power level, Vegeta, what does the scouter say about his power level? It's over 9,000! What 9,000? In order to identify the usual suspect with the highest power level, we need to determine a criteria, something that we can translate into numbers so the end result is some table with the highest scores at the top. Like an old school creatures Olympic Games or a creatures Eurovision contest. The four most relevant criteria I came up with are mana affordability, threat level, defense level, and resiliency to removal. Would you add anything else? Well, it's too late. The video is finished now. But you can write it in the comments below. When it comes to mana affordability, we will sort the 13 usual suspects in a descending row. So the one at the top gets 13 points, the second one 12 points, and so on. We will repeat this process for the threat level and the defense level and sum up the points afterwards. The resiliency to removal would be divided into four categories. Swords to Plowshares, Lightning Bolt, Psionic Blast, and Terror. A creature receives two extra points if they resist a particular removal without any interaction. Or they receive one extra point instead if they are able to resist it by using its abilities. Already lost swimming in numbers? Don't worry, we'll calculate this together. So let's go. So I am ready to cut out today. So let's go, let's get it on. Creatures are more affordable to play when they have a lower converted mana cost. Also, they are easier to cast when they have less colored mana symbols in their cost. With that in mind, this is the point distribution for mana affordability. Mistress Factory, 13 points, because it just costs us one land drop. Savannah Lions, 12 points. Nothing more to say than costing just one mana. Kurt Ape, 11 points. It doesn't get the full 12 points like the Savannah Lions, because in order to seize its full potential, we need to have a forest in the battlefield. Atok and Argothian Pixies, 10 points. They both cost 2 mana, one of which is colored. Black Knight, 9 points. It also costs 2 mana, but it's more difficult to cast because both are colored. Serendip Ifrit, 8 points, that's all. 
it costs 3 mana. Set Troll, 7 points. It doesn't get the full 8 points like this Arendip Ifrit, because in order to seize its full potential, we need to have a Swamp present in the battlefield. Hypnotic Spectre, 6 points. It also costs 3 mana, but it's more difficult to cast because two of those are colored. Suchi, 5 points. 4 mana, colorless, easy. Ernam Jin, 4 points. It also costs 4 mana, but you know, one of them is colored. Juzan Jin, 3 points. Same same, costs 4 mana, but two of them are colored. And Sarah Angel, 2 points. With a converted mana cost of 5, it is the least affordable creature of the list. How urgent is it to get rid of a particular creature? And is it just damage what really matters? Here we go. Atok, 13 points. I'm sure you didn't expect this. Maybe you also didn't expect that this creature can kill you in one hit with a serious punch. In a shell with plenty of disruptive artifacts, this creature is the number one threat of this list. Hypnotic Spectre, 12 points. Discarding a card at random every time this flying monster hits us, it's a devastating effect. No other card in old school does something similar, except of course Nicol Bolas, but good luck casting it. Sarah Angel, 11 points. She has lower stats than other creatures in this list, but flying allows her to avoid most defenders and ignore a mode. Serendip Ifrit, 10 points. Hits for 3 and flies. It really puts you in a clock. Chusum Jin, 9 points. The strongest stats of all. It's the scariest boogeyman on the ground. Ernam Jin, 8 points. Almost a Chusum Jin, just a little bit weaker. Suchi, 7 points. A solid 4-4 on the ground. Set Troll, 6 points. A 3-3 that can regenerate after trading with a blocker. Cured Ape, 5 points. Survives a battle against any cost 1 or cost 2 of this list. Black Knight, 4 points. The first strike is a plus. Argothian Pixies, 3 points. Passes through Mistress Factories and Suchis. Mistress Factory, 2 points. Just a basic 2-2 on the offense. And Savannah Lions, 1 point. The least threatening of all since it can be destroyed even by a 1-1 creature. How safe do you feel owning one of these usual suspects in the battlefield? And how likely is that you will use them just for defense? Sarah Angel, 13 points. A solid 4-4 flyer that can always defend, even if you attacked with it as well. Setch Troll, 12 points. With its regenerate ability, it can block literally anything on the ground and survive to tell the story. This is the toughest non-flying creature of all. Serendip Ifrit, 11 points. It blocks threatening hypnotic specters. Although taking 1 damage per turn makes it less ideal to consider it a long-term defender. Juzum Jin, 10 points. Nothing passes through this big boy on the ground. Literally nothing. Although, same as with the Serendip Ifrit, taking wind damage per turn makes you want to reconsider your long-term strategy with this one. Suchi, 9 points. A solid 4-4 wall. Mistress Factory, 8 points. A very mana-efficient 3-3 wall. Ernam Jin, 7 points. Its stats are almost the ones of Juzum Jin. But it doesn't get the full 9 points because providing forest work to an opposing creature makes it virtually unblockable. Which makes Ernan Jin much worse on the defense. Cured Ape, 6 points. An effective 2 3 blocker that defends against any cost 1 or cost 2 of this list. Black Knight, 5 points. The first strike is a clear advantage. Atok, 4 points. With a minimal artifact, sacrificed investment, it can defeat any other ground creature. But this could be done once, maybe twice, before the card advantage loss becomes punishing. Argothian Pixies, 3 points. Not much of a defender, but it keeps Suchis and Mistress Factories at bay. Hypnotic Spectre, 
two points. Nothing special other than it can trade against another Hypnotic Spectre. And Savannah Lions, one point. In most cases, it's nothing but a chump blocker. Either you are a low-cost creature with high stats, or you're tough enough to stand your ground against removal. Otherwise, you don't make it to the usual suspects list. The following creatures get two extra points because they are not scared of swords to plowshares. Black Knight. That's right, this dude has some serious farm allergies. Now stand aside, worthy adversary. Tis but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off. No, it isn't. Well, what's that then? I've heard worse. Let's see who is brave enough to survive a lightning bolt. Two extra points to Jusam Jin, Ernam Jin, Sarah Angel, Serendip Ifrit, and Suchi. But there are some more that can dodge that bullet after a small interaction. One extra point to Set Troll and Atok. You need to be a bit tougher to resist a psionic blast. Two extra points to Jusam Jin and Ernam Jin. And, after an interaction to avoid dying to a psionic blast, one extra point to Set Troll and Atok. There is no way to interact your way through terror, though. Either you're just born tough or you're out. Two extra points to Jusen Jin, Suchi, Mistress Factory, and Black Knight. Come on, you pansy! <laughs> The thrilling results of the calculation show a really close contest, and even having several creatures sharing the same power level. It's over 9000! Here is the final ranking. 9th place for the Savannah Lions with 14 points. 8th place for the Argothian Pixies with 16 points. 7th place for the trio of Kirtape, Hypnotic Spectre and Black Knight with 22 points. 6th place for the Ernam Jin with 23 points. 5th place for the duo of Suchi and Mistress Factory with 25 points. 4th place for the Sedge Troll with 27 points. 3rd place for the couple of the Jusen Jin and Sarah Angel with 28 points. 2nd place for the Atok with 29 points. And the first place is for the Serendip Ifrit with 31 points. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when we're part of the team. In the end, Serendip Ifrit was proclaimed the king of the usual suspects list, followed by the dangerous Atok and the demonic angelic Jinjan couple of Jusen Jin and Sarah Angel. Well, I was surprised when I saw the results. Were you surprised too? Would you have chosen a completely different criteria? Let me know in the comments below. Now that we know which are the top old school creatures and their relative power level, wouldn't it be great to prepare our decks against them? Stay put for the next Inside videos, where I will analyze one by one the most powerful removal cards in the format. See you in the next... Vegeta! What does the Scouter say about his power level? It's 1006. What, really? Yeah! Kick his ass, Nappa! Yay! Wait, 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 wait! Nappa! What? I had the Scouter upside down. It's over 9,000! See you in the next one. Every competition has its winners and its losers, but from afar, spectators watch in silence. Special mention to the following iconic creatures that couldn't make it to the list of the usual suspects. Juggernaut, Flying Man, Guardian Beast, Solkanar, and Shivan Dragon.